Palace Intrigue now has merch. Check out the hats, t-shirts, mugs, and other great items with Palace Intrigue, Deep Crown, Good Times, Kate is Wonderful, and more. There's free shipping, and for a limited time, get 10% off with the code NEWMERCH10. Go to calaroga.com, that's C-A-L-O-R-O-G-A.com, or look for the link in the show notes. We really appreciate your support for the show. Thanks. Calaroga Shark Media. Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. Royal biographer Emily Andrews in Woman Magazine writes about Harry's three straight disappointments. It has been humiliation after humiliation for Prince Harry. Harry has broken so many bonds of trust with so many people, it is difficult to see him ever attending a society wedding or trooping the colour again. She added that going to Hugh Grosvenor's wedding would have been too awkward due to the frosty feud between him and William and the potential for overshadowing the day. The Daily Mirror's royal correspondent told Sky News Australia, members from the royal family have told Harry if he wants a relationship with the rest of the family, then first and foremost, he has got to stop talking about them. They can't go about making money off their associations with the royal family. They're going to have to sort of realize if they're going to have a relationship with the rest of the royal family, they can't go about trashing them. Hopefully, they'll see that the royal family are very united without them. And if they do want a relationship going forward, they need to take the steam out of their relationship and out of the things they say sometimes. The Express quoted a source as saying Harry and Meghan hated having separate parents who weren't on good terms as they felt they were pulled in different directions. They have vowed that divorce is not an option, especially when they have such young children and they are responsible for shaping their lives. They would never want to put Archie and Lily through any of that and they want them to have as idyllic and innocent childhood as possible. According to royal expert Tom Quinn, Harry and Meghan could face a difficult situation if invited by King Charles to join the royal family at Balmoral this summer. Quinn stated, If the invitation becomes a real invitation, and it is almost certainly to do that, both Harry and Meghan will find themselves in a very difficult position. They are obsessed with their public image and will be aware that it will look really good if they swallow their pride and came back to the UK. But Meghan still wants that apology from William and King Charles and Kate, so it's going to be difficult for her to swallow her pride. But on the other hand, she won't want to appear to be holding a grudge because that will lead to criticism and she really hates criticism. According to people I've spoken to at Kensington Palace, King Charles has hinted to Harry and Meghan that they should come to Balmoral in the summer to see if something can be done about the ongoing feud in the family. Charles knows that Harry and Meghan are much more likely to respond positively to an invitation after the shock of Harry's father's cancer diagnosis and Kate's cancer diagnosis. It's one of those situations where good might just come out of bad. Royal insider Deep Crown said... If an invitation is indeed extended, it will put Harry and Meghan in a delicate position. On one hand, accepting the offer could be seen as a powerful gesture of reconciliation, a chance to set aside their differences and come together as a family in time of need. Of course, there's the likelihood that the Sussexes will decline the invitation, citing the needs of their young children as a convenient excuse. But even if they do, the mere fact that Charles is considering extending the offer speaks volumes about his desire to heal the rift and bring his family back together. As the reigning monarch, he has the power to set the tone for the entire family, and his actions in the coming months will be closely watched by all. Will he prove to be a master of the royal chessboard, navigating the complex web of personalities and agendas with the skill and finesse of a true leader? After all, he is the king. You can hear more from Deep Crown every Sunday as part of his weekly address available to paid subscribers to Palace Intrigue. For just $4.99 a month, you get this program commercial free, plus Deep Crown's weekly episode and access to hundreds and hundreds of other episodes from Calaroga Shark Media on our network. You can find all the details in the show notes. Royal commentator Michael Cole chimed in on Nacho Gate, telling GBN America host Nana Akua that Megan invites comparison with Kate with such moves. Kate was a child of a middle-class family. She wasn't trained to be a princess of the royal blood, and she wasn't, of course, ever an actress. And in everything that Meghan Markle does, she invites a comparison with the Princess of Wales. And I'm afraid in that comparison, Meghan Markle doesn't come off very well. Are they so desperate for cash that they have to come out and bring out a retail line of jams and other things which we can all do without? It's a mystery to me. 
PR consultant Mark Borkowski critiqued fans of the Sussexes. Borkowski told Newsweek, No one believes in the depths of this battle that still goes on that either party would want to seize upon health issues to fight a war. I think there are some lines of demarcation, particularly the health of the king and Kate. I don't think they're deploying their troops. This is more about the danger of foot soldiers who are uncontrollable because they enjoy their own coverage. It's a danger in terms of spreading rumors, in terms of their own fame and their own ego and their own self-determination. A danger to truth. They're part of an army of people on social media who are driving more and more conspiracy theories. Palace Indrig will be right back. Peter Morgan, creator of The Crown, explained how Elizabeth's death affected the show. Morgan told Variety, I think it changed everything. It changed how we felt making the show. We felt it much more acutely in the United Kingdom. It felt, I don't know, it felt like a band without the lead singer. Do you know what I mean? It felt like, oh, but we're making a show about her and about her life. And then I had to suddenly deal with her death at a time where there was no prospect of her dying. So how do you then write an episode that deals with her death, even though at that point she still had 18 years to live? So that's when we stumbled upon the fact that she was actively planning her funeral from 20 years out. So that was a light bulb. I was like, well, we can make the final episode about her death, even though she's not going to die for 18 years. But in terms of the show, I don't know, I think you suddenly thought, how much she, as this rather unknowable woman, suddenly the absence of her, even though she was never that present volubly in terms of speech, in terms of actions, she wasn't like a Trump where you really feel them the whole time. Her absence, we felt it acutely. And there you have it. If you'd like to email us, our address is thepalaceintrigue at gmail.com. Please follow us on Spotify, Apple, or the app of your choice. Leave us a review or stars if you enjoy the show. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott. This is Palace Intrigue. Good times. Good times.